So, welcome to Holy Week at Bombo. It's our first uh, retreat uh, at Bombo and our first Easter at Bombo. So a very special moment uh, for the resident community here, but also very special for the, for the world community. So we're not doing this live this year because we don't have the uh, capacity yet. Can, are you okay? For everybody? It's slower. A bit slower, okay. We, we're, so we're going to uh, record and uh, upload the talks later. And uh, uh, Helen is translating for me uh, simultaneously. So I have to speak a little bit more slowly than usual uh, until we get into a... Uh, would you mind putting that on the ground? Uh, I was going to put it on the ground. Um, until we get into, uh, into step with each other. So... Um, This year, 2019, which is the special year in which we begin our life at Bombo, this year is uh, the 900th anniversary of the founding of Bombo by Benedictine monks in 1119. That's the first mention in the records of this uh, monastery which was continued here until after, just after the French Revolution, uh, until about 1793. So for a long time, the contemplative life was lived here. And I think that uh, contemplative life uh, touches the material world as well. I think uh, we live in an integrated universe, a material realm, a spiritual realm, emotional, psychological dimension. And any, anything that is intensely lived in any one of these dimensions touches all the other dimensions. So the spiritual life here, I think, uh, I can't prove it scientifically, but most of you who have been here, most of our visitors have remarked that there is a special energy, a special atmosphere, a special uh, sense here. And this is, a, this is a reality. It's not, a, I think, a fantasy or a, a pious invention. Uh, but it's a, in terms of science, it's a, it's a mystery. It's something we cannot uh, analyze or measure. And in this Holy Week, we will be attuning ourselves to this dimension of reality, to this mystery, as we prepare to celebrate the great mystery of the resurrection. For some people, the story of Holy Week, the uh, arrest, the, the suffering and the death of Jesus is described in a very uh, powerful way that makes it one of the great stories of humanity, full of meaning and full of revelation about human nature and our human condition. And for many of these people, they would say, that is enough, we don't need the second part of the story, which is the resurrection. That is a mythical element that is added on to 
something that is much more easily understood. So we begin this Holy Week being open about the fact that we are open to this other dimension, to the dimension of something that cannot be measured or analyzed, but which can be experienced and felt. So this week uh, gives us uh, a special opportunity at the uh, culmination, the end of Lent, to refine our senses so that we are able to sense God. We can't sense God just through our normal five senses. We have the, the need of a spiritual sense for this, for the perception that arises in, the, in this other dimension, the spiritual dimension that is not a separate dimension because it includes and enfolds all the other dimensions that we are familiar with, the dimensions we inhabit. Two, three dimensions of time, past, present, and future, and the dimension of space. But there is also, for some people, anyway, an awareness and acceptance of this uh, spiritual dimension. So we are, we're open uh, to that spiritual dimension by the very fact that we meditate. I don't think anyone meditates for any length of time without discovering that they are touching a new kind of experience, a different kind of experience. And even someone who has no religious belief, uh, somebody, somebody who is not aware of living a spiritual life, uh, they, they will discover through the uh, regular practice of meditation a different kind of way of perception, a different kind of experience. And it, they may discover that this is a, a very real experience. It affects the way they relate to their husband or wife. It relates to the way they control their anger. It relates to the way they uh, treat their children. It relates to the way they handle stress or depression or addiction. So it's a very real kind of experience, but at the same time, it's very difficult to put into words and certainly difficult really to measure. So meditation opens us to the spiritual dimension, whether or not we uh, call it that, or whether or not we accept that it is something different, something new. So Lent, the six weeks of Lent, is a traditional time, 40 days, <coughs> suggests uh, in biblical symbolism a, a, a period of time in which a project or, 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 or something is completed. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it doesn't mean literally 40 days or 40 years in the desert. It means uh, a significant period of time in which um, a process is completed. And uh, Lent symbolizes the spiritual journey which means the process 
through which we come to, to open and to discover this spiritual uh, dimension of our lives in, uh, in a new way. And of course, as we do discover this dimension, we realize it's a non-spatial dimension, not limited by space, and it's a non-temporal dimension. It's not limited by time. So how do we describe this dimension uh, that is, we can experience in time and space, even physically, emotionally, psychologically, intellectually, but it, it is always something more. There is no obvious boundary, no definition, a final definition for this experience. So the 40 days represents a limited period of time in which we at least make a beginning. We enter into this dimension. We, we begin seriously to make a journey that in fact has no observable end. Okay, it's always open-ended. We don't know how it will end or when it will end or what even end means. So, so that's been the meaning of, of, of Lent and it, it might be good for us to just review what Lent has meant for us this year. And you may judge Lent just by, did I keep all the good intentions I, I had at the beginning? Uh, did I keep away from sweets or sugar or alcohol or whatever else? And did I, uh, was I faithful to the, the new and, or additional uh, practices I intended to, uh, to undertake? Maybe extra meditation or extra reading or extra time given to developing this spiritual dimension. So that's one way of evaluating the last 40 days. Uh, did, did I get 60%, 80%, 100%? Uh, I hope nobody did get 100%, because if you did, you, you know, then you begin to feel quite proud of yourself. And spiritual pride, or pride arising from your spiritual practice, is, uh, is the most subtle kind of uh, problem in the spiritual life because it undermines the very thing that we are achieving. So let's hope, let's hope we've all recognized that we, were, <coughs> we didn't get 100%, at least not 100%. But that's one way of trying to measure the meaning of these 40 days. But there are other ways uh, you, 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 that we could say we had a good Lent. If we grew in self-knowledge, even through failure. If we grew in self-acceptance, especially in those parts of ourselves where we usually reject ourselves and feel inadequate, or we feel uh, bad about ourselves. Um, perhaps it was a good Lent because we stopped thinking about ourselves so much and analyzing and evaluating ourselves. And it's only now that we could recognize that we had become less self-conscious, <coughs> less self-analytical. And uh, if we can notice that, we, we will feel more light, 
more free. There'll be a sense of expansion and satisfaction uh, in realizing that. So there are many other more subtle ways of just understanding what kind of journey we were on during these 40 days, these last six weeks. So, um, but now we have this holy week, the seven days before uh, Easter Sunday. And th this is a, a kind of a more intense conclusion to the ordinary 40 days of Lent. It's a time where we can focus through, especially through the story of the last uh, days and hours and seconds of the historical life of Jesus. The, the gospel stories um, of the passion are like different cameras uh, set up to observe the same event. Uh, here in this room, we just have one camera but if we had cameras at different corners, you'd get a different perspective of what's happening, a different sense of what the room looked like, and certain details would appear more uh, strongly, more emphatically in, in through some cameras than others. So in the same way, in these four Gospels, we uh, see different perspectives on the same series of events. And these are very, very time-related events, very historical events. The, the, the um, close-up happens, of course, from, uh, from Holy Thursday, Jeudi Saint, <coughs> when we uh, we, we begin the three days, three even more intense days of, of the story when we uh, s celebrate and remember the great uh, uh, moment of the Last Supper and the accounts of that story which are so full of amazing amazing insights and symbolism. And then Good, Good Friday, Benedictin, where we, uh, we go through the, 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 the trial of Jesus and his suffering and finally his, his death. Uh, and that finishes at three o'clock on Friday, and then there's this long nothingness, where, um, which is like after a funeral, after the relatives have gone home and the friends have, have had to go back to work, and you're left alone with this, this strange absence, this, this difficult emptiness, uh, in your life. And uh, this is part of life. This is part of um, not just the story of Easter, but the story of every, of every human life. After loss, after death, there is an absence, an emptiness, uh, a limbo in which we, uh, we have no sense of what is going to happen next because all of the parameters, all of the things we could measure in our familiar world have now been changed, remapped by uh, this event, this death or this loss. So I'm sure we have all experienced that uh, in different ways. And then we move into this into the spiritual dimension, most uh, 
intensely uh, in liturgically in the celebration uh, of the Easter Vigil and the resurrection. So, so Holy Week moves us along more deeply now into the meaning of Lent, but now focusing very uniquely on the person of Jesus and of these last, especially these last days, hours, minutes, and seconds of his life. So that's why we call it Holy Week. It is, I, I think, probably uh, nothing, pro probably, I mean, nothing very extraordinary will happen this week. Maybe they will solve Brexit. That might be something ex extraordinary. But uh, we call it a Holy Week, not because something fantastically unusual is going to happen, or that even we will have some great spiritual illumination. Maybe that will happen as you walk around the lake uh, or the woods. But we call it Holy Week because it is an ordinary week in which we investigate the wholeness of life. And the wholeness of life, the entire entirety of life, um, is an integration of all dimensions of reality, of every aspect of our own personal lives, everything that we normally put into compartments and separate and categorize work, family, money, sexuality, uh, relationships, um, planning for your retirement, <laughs> Uh, your, your financial situation and then your spiritual life, your entertainment life, your holidays, my me time. So all of these many little categories or labels that we put on uh, different aspects of our, of our life. And uh, I was talking to a lawyer the other day, and we were, he, he was joking about how lawyers charge, you know, because sometimes huge amounts of money for their, uh, for their professional services. And um, he was saying now in, in some firms, if the lawyer has to travel um, to another city or country for a job, then he will charge for every minute of that travel as well. So, you know, when he's having a shower or, <laughs> or having a drink on the, on the plane, uh, all of this will be at a, whatever it is, $1,000 or more an hour. So uh, that's one way of making your life whole. <laughs> you say, my whole life is chargeable. Okay? I can charge for every second. I, I think uh, if you think of your life as being integrated in that way, it would, it would lead to quite deep level of dissatisfaction. You would think if whatever makes my life whole should be something that is 
uplifting, inspiring, uh, wonderful, something I, I, that expands my mind and heart and vision of reality. So anything that occupies or uh, engages my attention so fully has to be equal to the wonder of my own human nature. And if I reduce that to what I charge for my professional services, but that is my life, well, we know there's something missing. So Holy Week is an opportunity, whether you are on retreat, as we are here, or whether you are trying to live this, this journey and this, uh, this special time at home while you're also going to work, it doesn't matter what you're doing this Holy Week. Um, but what, whatever occupation may be, we, we may be engaged in this week, the opportunity is for us to transcend these different categories, to get to the essence, to see life in its simplicity, not in a, not in a falsely simple way, but in a, a way, in a simplicity that respects the diversity, and discovers the harmony that exists between these different dimensions, between my personal life, my professional life, my spiritual life, my cultural life. That these are not ultimately separated uh, compartments. And that's what I mean by the spiritual dimension. The spiritual dimension which includes, but also respects, the different qualities of these different aspects of our personality. So Holy Week is about being whole. And not waiting for something extraordinary to happen, but to see what is happening with clear eyes, with new perception. As William Blake said, if we could cleanse the doors of perception, we would see everything as it really is, infinite. In other words, without boundaries, without ultimate uh, divisions. And this is important for us to, it's important for us to taste this because we cannot understand the resurrection unless we can understand the ordinary. Because the resurrection, as we'll see later, happens in the ordinariness, the ordinary nature of our experience. And that's why, for example, uh, we don't have a description of the resurrection as if a, a lightning bolt hit the tomb and a great flash of brilliant light happened and everybody saw Jesus emerging from the tomb. It's not how it's described. Clearly, there's something out of the ordinary in the resurrection, but it, but it is in the ordinary and needs to be in the ordinary for us to understand it and experience it. So, so Holy Week is a time for us to concentrate upon the harmonizing and integrating the different uh, aspects of our self, 
and of our lives. So it's a time for reflection, a, a time maybe to examine our, our lives in, in a particular way. And um, that's what we mean by holy. Seeing, discovering the wholeness of it. And then it, 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 is, a, it is a week. It is time. So it's a particular period of time. And that, uh, this period of time, uh, of course, is limited. But at the same, t- same time, it is eternal. So we have to be prepared to be sort of bilingual, uh, to be able to live within time and in the eternal at the same time. This, this, is, this is the meaning of the, of, the Christian, uh, of the Christian life, in fact, based on the incarnation. So it's like any other week, but so nothing dramatic may happen, but it is time for us to observe the simple reality uh, around us. And if you have time, those of you who, who are on retreat here at Bombo have time, you will have time to just walk in the very beautiful nature uh, uh, around us, uh, just to observe it and to realize that we are part of it, to realize that we are observed by it as well. We're not just observers, we are also participants in, in, in all of this. So th- if we, first of all then, think back to the, uh, the meaning, spiritual meaning, uh, of the last 40 days of our Lent this year. Uh, not just in terms of did I succeed or fail, but in terms of how did I grow in self-knowledge, in humility. Self-knowledge and humility are the same thing, really. Um, what, did I, what did I learn about myself and how did I learn to stop thinking about myself? so much, to be so obsessed with my own likes and dislikes. Was there growth there? Maybe just a little growth. But was there, was there something in, in that experience of Lent that I can now identify and be grateful for and feel that the finger of, of God the the touch of the Holy Spirit uh, was at work. So that's the the first thing perhaps we should do uh, on Palm Sunday at the beginning of of Holy Week, reflect on the uh, process that has brought us to this point. And then we begin a more intensive, not intense, but intensive, a uh, week in which we are open to the ordinary and to the presence of God in every dimension of our lives. And we, we, we each of us may begin this in different ways. We recognize that presence of God in a particular category of our life. Could be your religious category or your meditation category. But it could also then expand and you find the same presence, the same sense of God uh, in your relationships with other people, your business relationships, as well as your intimate relationships or in your, your work, or your play, or your uh, enjoyment of nature. So it's, it's like a little light coming on in each of these rooms. As I 
as we came back last night from our guiding board dinner, uh, I, we drove into Bonvo. Uh, it was dark, and uh, I saw this beautiful view of, uh, of, of the Abbey here, where we are now, uh, with lights on in many, many of the rooms. And I hadn't seen that before, because no one was living in here before. If we saw a light on, we went in and turned it off to save money. But now, uh, in the evening, you know, before people go to bed, you'll see lights in, in all the rooms, and all the rooms are occupied this week. And, uh, and there was something very beautiful about that. It was very quiet, um, and yet uh, a sense of presence, of being occupied, uh, a sense of a life uh, forming uh, in different rooms, but the same life. So I think the same happens in the house of the self. Jesus said, my father's house has many mansions. There are many rooms in my father's house. And uh, so we have these many different aspects, categories uh, in ourselves. But the same light has to come on in each of them. And when we can see that all of these different aspects of our lives are being illuminated by the same light, that's a wonderful discovery of wholeness and the meaning of holiness. So I hope that for each of us uh, in this coming week, maybe at least one little room will light, light up in our life. And if one light gets turned on in us, then it will usually encourage another light to, to come on as well before too long. So I wish you a very happy and holy week, and uh, we'll progress uh, during the week together here in Bombo, and we'll share as well as we can. We'll share the, uh, the spirit of, of Bonbo and the holiness of this week and this place uh, with those who are joining in um, uh, from different parts of the world at different times of the day. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.